Hey everybody, it's Tim Miller from The Bulwark, and I've been doing these little one-offs with people that catch my eye uh, with public statements, and so we had to do this with former Republican congressman from South Carolina, Bob Inglis. He represented the 4th District up in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. Now uh, he's also working with Republic N E N there. It's a Republican for Climate Change group, and he made some big news recently endorsing Kamala Harris. How you doing, Congressman? Thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for the opportunity. Good to be with you. Hey, uh, well... Well, I mean, you have uh, been, you know, uh, as part of the you know, kind of this group and and criticizing, you know, the Republicans for, uh, you know, at times stepping away from uh, rationality. I believe one of your words. This isn't the first. This isn't the first time that you've uh, positioned yourself uh, against uh, the the party. But uh, why did you feel like it was important to just come out and explicitly support Kamala Harris um, rather than you know staying in the maybe safer, uh, just criticize Donald Trump lane? Well, you know, I, I just uh, I just can't vote for Donald Trump, and I think he's a clear and present danger to the country. And you put those two things together, and you find an alternative who I don't agree with on everything. I mean, there are a number of things I don't agree with uh, uh, Kamala Harris about, but I got it. But she's uh, seems to be a rational operator. <laughs> That's yeah. a big help, um, and she. Um, she seems to have a character on her side, you know, and, and for, from my way of thinking, character is the first test uh, on any candidate. And that's the one that Donald Trump fails on so miserably. Um, you know, uh, really anybody that's got such a low transactional view of life like he does, it's just... Uh, it's it's really a problem, you know, and he, he also, I, I feel sorry for the guy too, uh, to tell you the truth. I, I think he's a pretty sick puppy, you know, he um, he's a narcissist who thinks only of himself. And so, um, you know, the difference between that uh, and Kamala Harris is that Kamala Harris seems to think about other people, not just about herself. And so it's, uh, it's those two things, it's character and it's rationality that uh, make it uh, pretty clear that this is a moment when we need an alternative to Donald J. Trump. Yeah, hard to argue with that. I, I wonder about the Harris thing. Um, you know, uh, we, we can just, there's plenty of character, plenty of negative to talk about with Donald Trump. But I, I'm just curious, you know, what, what your reaction has been to her over the past six weeks. I, I mean, there have been a number of ways in which I've been, you know, kind of surprised about uh, the way that she's talked about foreign policy, about identity issues. I, she's done so in a way... I think is appealing a lot more to you know, people, center right folks, um, than maybe I would have expected. I wonder kind of what your reaction has been to kind of her, you know, rhetoric and her campaign. Has there been anything that has you know surprised you or, or you've caught particular note of, either policy wise or or you know tone message? Well, I, I think I think you're right. There is a, a real interesting shift that's going on here. So, for example, on an identity politics, you know, the problem is the Democrats created that. And boy, did it become a problem. The problem is that my party, our party, the Republican Party. My, I left, but that's okay. That's all right. Okay, I just, you know, so, for the record, I left in 2020. Uh, well, but, uh, our former party, I, I, I got plenty plenty to, of blame to go around. <laughs> I've, okay, I've got plenty well, of responsibility. But uh, well, yeah, so anyway, our, go ahead. Democrats started this identity politics thing. Republicans perfected it. And what I'm finding very interesting, consistent with what you were just saying, Tim, is that it seems that Kamala Harris is moving away from that. Yeah. I heard her answer, for example, about what it's like to be a woman running for president. And she said, you know, something to the effect, well, you know, people asked me that when I was running for uh, prosecutor and running for attorney general. And I said, I, I've just always been a woman. And uh, and I yeah. guess a man could do the job just as well. Yeah. Um, you know, th That is a... That's a really interesting and different answer than the one that would have been given several years ago, I think, uh, by Democrats that were playing to their extreme progressive end. And uh, I think she's smartly uh, hearing that, hey, you know what? People don't want to hear that stuff about how, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, too, too much about white privilege or something. All the Just deal with and, it. Yeah. Deal with it. We've got it. We we do have a history of racism in this country. 
but let's figure out policies to go forward. Let's not sit around and beat ourselves up about it. And what's interesting to me, Tim, is that the Economist this week is exactly on that point. Hmm. They've got a leader that talks exactly about that. So uh, if you ever want to know what Bob Inglis thinks, just listen to The Economist. Okay. Um, but uh, actually, that's not exactly true. <laughs> they're, they're into legalizing drugs, prostitution, pornography. I'm, I'm not going there with them on that. But, uh, you know, but, uh, but I think what, what about right my about gummies? It. What about my weed gummies? Can I have those? <laughs> are those okay? Or where are you, where are you drawing the line? <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to any of those places. Okay. But it's like this. But I think you're exactly right that Kamala Harris is really um, um, uh, charting a different course, plus saying, for example, if somebody breaks into her house, they're going to get shot. Yeah. Hello, gun-owning Americans. Um, she's got one, and yeah. she's going to shoot them. And another, I'm a prosecutor, she says. You know, I mean, so all these things, yeah, I think all those are three things right there together, Tim, that I think are indicative of how she's smartly realizing that you know, this is a general election. She doesn't have to run in a primary. She doesn't have to placate those really pretty crazy people far left. Um, she can appeal to most Americans. Yeah. What, um, you know, you're in upstate there in South Carolina. It's one of the more, of the more conservative parts of a conservative state. So, you know, you got to socialize. You got to go to, I'm sure, I don't know, whatever, dinner, church, whatever you're doing. Like, are you, are you taking heat? Are you taking, like, uh, I guess I've, it's a two-part question. One, are you taking a lot of, you know, BS from people uh, publicly? And two, like, what do you say to them? Like, like, what do you say to conservatives who, you know, come up to you and say, she's a socialist or how could you do this? It's too far left. Like, what, what you know, what's your main message? Well, you know, it's interesting. We we had a guy, I live on a farmette, you know, that's what we pretend to be farmers. We're really not farmers, but we got, uh, you know, a pasture that needed some lime put out on it okay. to uh, adjust the pH on the pasture. And so uh, this guy comes to do that and he pulls up in the driveway, he tells me to get in the truck so he can, uh, I can go show him where the, where he want, where we want to put out. He says, well, first of all, I got to ask you, I've been interested because, you know, I knew I was coming here to your place, Bob. Yeah. Who are we going to vote for? And I thought, oh, golly, I don't want to talk about this. No, I mean, this is not. Um, and so we went to see where to put out the line. We came back to the driveway. He says, now, now, tell me, who are we going to vote for? And I said, I just can't vote for Donald Trump. I can't either, he says. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a guy... A uh, really local fella, you know, been here for all of his life. Yeah. Um, a very conservative guy, um, identified himself as a church going believer. Um, he says, I, I just can't, I just can't vote for him. And so I'm actually encouraged him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some feedback from people that, of course, I'm getting nasty grams too. And yeah, answer sure. your question, of course, I'm getting yeah. uh, hate mail uh, for uh, what I've said. Uh, but, I'm encouraged by people like that. I mean, really, um, really solid folks in our community, been here a long time, who who just can't take this, uh, can't take it from Donald Trump. And, you know, what's amazing is given some things about the economy, you would expect any Republican to be able to, to win in this mm -hmm. uh, cycle. But no, it's because we've got Donald Trump. That's that's the problem for us. That's why it's so close. Yeah. What is um? So when you're talking to guys like that, I, I like to ask this question to a wide variety of people because you know everybody's different, and and maybe you have a you know, different um look on it. But we have a lot of listeners who say, ask me this, which is like, what should I tell my friend who is a Republican who doesn't really like Trump? Like, how can I get him over the edge on voting for Kamala? Or what should I tell my uncle or my dad or whatever? And um, so I'm just curious, like what if you if you had the moment to try to win somebody like that over who says, says I'm a conservative, I'm a church goer, I'm anti Trump. I don't know if I can vote for Kamala. I might just write in if you were going to give them a little one minute pitch. Like what, what would be what would be the core message that you would try to try to use to win them over? I'd say, you know, um, we can come back later and deal with the spending. This going to be too much. We can come back later and deal with uh some not real good policies like a $25,000 help to on a down payment. That's yeah. going to make the cost of houses go up by $25,000. So that's what that's going to do. Um, we, we can come back later and talk about those things. 
But here's the thing, you know, politicians claim to do, okay, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Well, they get there and A is blocked and B yeah. is no longer available and C is uh, pass A for some reason. All you're left with is your character. That's yeah. it. And so what I would just urge them to think about is you might not like some of the policies, but those are going to be worked out in the give and take of the political process. This character flaw is fundamental. I mean, you can't overcome it. Um, and so that's, I'd go back to the character thing just, yeah. and just, um, and, and just urge them to have a little bit of courage that, uh, you know, uh, we really do have to put country first here. Uh, yeah. This is the time to do that. Um, one, one more thing on the, so on the climate issue, since you've been out on that, uh, it, kind of separate from Donald Trump, really. I mean, Donald Trump's horrible on climate, uh, but, uh, but almost independently of him, the party has gotten worse on this issue. I mean, in 2008, you know, a lot of times people, I get the question, I'm sure you do too, like, is the party leaving you or do you change? And I, you know, I've changed on some issues, but I, like on some issues, the party has really gotten changed. I, you know, you like tariffs would be one, but also on cli climate. Um, you know, in 2008, John McCain ran on cap and like supporting some sort of, uh, you know, cap and trade type policy. And uh, Republicans were pretty comfortable talking. Maybe, maybe even if they didn't support that, they're talking at least about, you know, investing in renewables or other ways to kind of deal with the climate issue, more market oriented ways. You just see less and less of that now. And since you've kind of been on the front lines of this, I'm just wondering, is there any positive stuff there? Like, why do you think it's gotten so much worse? Well, actually, here's the thing. Um, it's it maybe appears worse to you because you're you're reading the headlines from I don't know Marjorie Taylor Greene or yeah. Lauren Boebert or Donald J Trump calling it a hoax. But if you go out with me, where I'm going to talk to young Republicans, for example, I remember here recently a young Republicans of the Treasure Coast. Okay. Um, it's uh, along the Florida coast, just above. Uh, not very far from Mar-a-Lago, actually. Yeah. And so um, it, was, it was clear they were very much as Trump supporters, huh. but they were very open to this message that we need to fix this problem of climate change and Republicans need an answer. Um, and um, so now part of that is that they're young and they plan on staying on the planet for a while. <laughs> um, but the reason that... Um, you know, the, the others, the, 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 the people I just mentioned that uh, are consistent with what you were just saying, um, those folks um, are responding just to some activists within the party um, that are really hard over against climate action. But those, um, those people are getting fewer and farther between. I mean, they are, um, I'm really encouraged, actually, that things are uh, things are going to come around uh, on climate, um, and it has to do with young Republicans, really, because mm -hmm. the polling data is pretty clear. Young Republicans want action on climate change as much as young progressives do, um, and uh, it's really just their parents and grandparents. And so the reason we spend so much time at RepublicEN.org with young uh, conservatives is we figure they're the best ambassadors to their parents and grandparents. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. Well, I'll, I'd like ending on a positive note, though. This is kind of a, mi a mind blower for some viewers, particularly liberal viewers who don't so, don't grasp what's happening in Republican culture. The youngest Republicans are both more MAGA, but also more open to climate change, like more pro-Trump, but also more open. To climate. It's a, it's an interesting dichotomy. It might not be what you would kind of expect, right? But uh, it's it, if you think about it more, just as how they came up. They came up in a Donald Trump world, right? And they came up in a world where, major, where climate is a major crisis. So like in that context, it makes a little bit more sense, even though maybe not yeah. as on the nose for like it's, for some of us. It's also terrifying, yeah. Um, because you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm a guy. I'm going to date myself. You know, I, I, I came of age with Ronald Reagan yeah. speaking. You know, and Reagan would say things like. Uh, so much of what the liberals know just isn't so, you know, and uh, that was a very polite way of slamming the left. Right. Yeah. But uh, now, you know, you have rhetoric that's just full out warfare, you know, yeah. and talking about bloodshed just about, yeah. you know, I mean, and so 
a bloodbath, as Donald J. Trump said. Um, and so what you just observed, I think, is true. It's also pretty doggone scary that uh, too many young Republicans have, have grown up on this kind of rhetoric. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think what it reflects, Tim, is just a, a, a low self-esteem that we've got, I think. Apparently, mm. we think this is all we deserve by way of rhetoric or leadership. Really? That's all this nation deserves is that level of rhetoric and that level of character and that level of rationality that will accept some guy just making stuff up and saying he's the greatest? Yeah. Really? I mean, it's maybe also something like battered wife syndrome or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's like we're just, we think we can't do any better than this. So really, it, it's a challenge. We, we need for young uh, Republicans, particularly the young ones you're talking about just there, to go watch some uh, Reagan speaking, you know, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a different kind of sound. Um, and uh, so so it's, it's it really is a challenge. Yeah, it's going to take a little while to unravel, but it's doable. We can do better. I have higher self-esteem about our country than that. So yeah. um, I'm with you on that. I appreciate you, Congressman, for stepping out on this. Hope you don't take too much heat at the local barbecue joint <laughs> up oh, there in yeah. the upstate yeah, and right. uh and hopefully um things will turn out as, as as you've said and we can make some positive change so thanks so much to uh, former republican congressman bob inglis and uh, make sure to subscribe to the feed give us a like and we'll be seeing you all soon peace